so bonkers to be at the front of a captive audience meeting where the people listening to you literally cannot leave and say, I'm not speaking to you as your boss, I'm speaking to you as your friend. Workers at Mercedes are uh, continuing their campaign to unionize. They are the second non-union automaker to file for a union election with the UAW. And uh, the company, despite being a German company uh, that has uh, agreed to German laws that say that, you know, since you're a German company, if you have a union campaign worldwide, you have to be neutral in it. Uh, Despite that, they are very obviously not being neutral. Uh, They're encouraging their their members, uh, their employees to vote no. Uh, and uh, it's all very, very similar stuff to what we've been seeing. More Perfect Union put together uh, some clips from uh, some of the meetings that have been held and some interviews with the workers themselves. So, uh, Adam, let's play this clip about Mercedes union busting. You're within spitting distance of a life-changing victory right here. That's why Mercedes is doing what companies always do, pulling out every trick in the book to instill fear, uncertainty, and doubt, or so division among the workers, to scare people away from standing up for a better life. My company's official public position is that uh, this is all up to the workers. They're allowed to make their own choice. Then every day inside the plant, I see the anti-union campaign. The union cannot guarantee you anything. Over a three-year contract, the UAW stands to collect tens of millions of dollars in dues and I believe you shouldn't have to pay union dues and generate millions of dollars per year for an organization where you have no transparency where that money is used. Okay, just pause there for a second. That is amazing. Coming from an executive of a company talking about you shouldn't have to pay uh, for, you know, millions of so a com- uh, so a corporation or an organization can make millions of dollars per year with no transparency. There is no <laughs> corporation in the country that has to be as transparent as unions. Unions have to file uh, all sorts of forms every single month. Members get to vote on budgets every single month. You see how much of your dues are going to your local and your international. Um, you get to vote on people who are going to be approving the international budget. You can see the international budget. I mean, there's just, there is no comparison when you're talking about the transparency between union funds and company <laughs> funds. Uh, <laughs> I'm making millions of dollars for corporations and they get to spend that money however they want. It's absolutely, um, it is just laughable for the head of a corporation who this guy makes millions of dollars per year himself as an individual. There is no UAW official who has ever made millions of dollars per year. Never. That's never happened. Ever. And yet this one single guy, he's not even, not even the only executive at Mercedes that makes millions of dollars per year. And he's trying to tell you that, oh, the, you know, UAW uh, officers make too much money. Uh, they're not accountable. They're not transparent. It's, you know, baloney. Let's continue. Uh, captive audience meetings where our, our CEO uh, said the UAW can't help us. And then he was telling, like, uh, the union wouldn't help. The union's not good for us because right now we're a family and Mm. that would all change but all right i gotta stop there on that um (laughs) the we're a family is a classic classic one um a pretty dysfunctional family would be my imagination uh because um Mm. to hear from a lot of these workers they don't feel like they're part of a family that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at the statistics on their wages and benefits and how it's declined over the years and the Alabama discount and on and on, it's not much of a family. Uh, but that's also hilarious to me that the idea that you're no longer a family if mm. someone in the family has a voice. Yeah, it's, it's very disturbing. This is definitely not how I treat my family. They had their time to speak up. They had their time to change and do right by us. 
and now it's now it's now it's gone. We're looking forward to UAW representing us. They're gonna fight because this is about power. And right now they have it and they don't want to share it. As a worker at a non-union auto plant and uh, trying to form a union at my workplace, I think it's absolutely terrible that I don't have the right to make that decision independently of uh, my management's influence. They have pretty much shown a video, if I'm not mistaken, every single week about the union. They can make us sit and watch those. People want to get up and leave. I've asked my supervisor, do I have to watch this? And he says, yes, you have to watch it. The company's just trying to make it look like, you know, having a union in the workplace is just totally negative. Collective bargaining is an uncertain process that could result in you getting more, less, or the same as what you have now. I thought they were supposed to be neutral, but this really don't mm. seem neutral. Yeah, we can stop it there. That's a good, great minds think alike. Um, that is just amazing that they would point to another company that has not signed a contract yet. And I mean, oh, what is it that they're saying? The, the thing that they're saying there is we might fight you as hard as Starbucks has been fighting their baristas. That's the, the I mean, that's a threat. That's a threat. By it is. alluding to Starbucks, but it's a threat that was very quickly undercut because, I mean, literally within days of this, of that meeting happening, this is from like an older meeting, is when Starbucks <laughs> announced that they were, uh, Starbucks and the union released a joint press release announcing that they were coming to an agreement on, uh, foundate, on a foundation for a nationwide contract. So, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a kind of a funny illusion to make uh, there, uh, even with its in in implicit threat, um, because Starbucks is now folding. So. Right. Hey, you know, these other folks that are unionizing, you know how their boss has just been totally uh, violating the law and been incredibly uh, rampantly yeah. busting their union and fighting them tooth and nail. Yeah. We hey, you heard about them? <laughs> I guess we could do that, too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tblr.fm slash donate. And it's just so misleading, if not an outright lie. They're having the group leaders talk in meetings and kind of tell stories about the union and what it did to different family members. So this is just me speaking to y'all, not as your boss, but as your friend. Now, hold on, stop for, for just for a second. Uh, <laughs> when my friends talk to me, I can leave. I, <laughs> I can choose not to listen. If Adam is just being really boring, I can just walk away. And, <laughs> and he can't dock my paycheck. Right. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's just so bonkers to be in a cap at the front of a captive audience meeting where the people listening to you literally cannot leave and say, I'm not speaking to you as your boss. I'm speaking to you as your friend. That is bonkers. Okay. Group leader, she talked to us about um, her experience with a union. Uh, she said things as in along the line of, uh, we get a union, um, she can't come help us like she normally does. She won't be able to give us our bathroom breaks, basically saying that. Right, yeah, know, that's a very the union famously, that. famously the union, union stop bathroom breaks. I'm telling you right now, I'm not your enemy. To me, it's all in an attempt to sway numbers or to intimidate people. Today, I want to share my opinion with you. It is clear. I don't believe the UNW can help us to be better. When the CEO spoke um, and was telling us his, his negative feelings about the union, I, I kind of felt like, you know, how, how dare a person uh, leading this company making potentially millions of dollars a year 
mm. um, talk to us workers like he knows what's best for us. I think it was really ridiculous of him to stand up there and say he cared when he really didn't. I was on the front row. This man was reading a teleprompter. You know, I feel like he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the team members. They care about their pockets. I wish the CEO understood that uh, even though maybe we don't have four-year degrees, we may not be engineers, or we may not have uh, you know years of management experience, that the, the workers actually build the cars, and we know how valuable we are to the company and what we contribute. I want y'all to know y'all my people, and I got you. And if you don't think that's the truth, try me sometime. <laughs> Let the company mistreat you and then call on me and see what I do. And I, and I won't never let you down, regardless of what the future holds. I just hope to win a better future for the people who come after. It really is a better future for Alabama, because I feel like we've been put on the low ball for too long. Right now we're being pushed against the wall. And if we don't do something, it's just going to get 10 times worse. For those co-workers who have family, do it for your family. That's why I'm doing it. Mm. My kids are the single most important thing to me, and I'm looking to brighten their future. Are you ready to fight? Yeah! I can't hear you! Yeah! Hey, who are we? You ain't ready! I can't hear you! You ain't ready! So there we go. Great video from More Perfect Union. Appreciate their work. Another piece that's come out about the union busting at Mercedes in Alabama is in labor notes from Luis Leon. Uh, the title is, With a Velvet Glove, Mercedes Tries to Punch Down the Alabama Union Momentum. Um, and he's talking about some of the captive audience meetings uh, stuff that they were saying there. Um <clears throat> talking about how the vice president of quality uh, uh, elaborated on, quote, what we are doing to react quickly to changing conditions when it comes to hiring strategies and compensation for our team members, uh, obviously referring to the uh, uh, to the UAW campaign uh, that they announced at a meeting subsequent to those meetings uh, just recently, like in the last few days, that workers will receive seven hundred dollars uh, on April 26th for a quarterly performance bonus and talked about improvements with onboarding new hires. Um, <laughs> he says, uh, Luis says in his article, the plant has struggled to retain workers and suffers from understaffing, especially on grueling assembly lines where workers are denied bathroom breaks. And so this $700 uh, bribe is, is, is that's coming at an interesting time. Wait, I thought the union was putting a stop to bathroom breaks mm. when they get in there. You yeah. telling me they don't have the, plenty of bathroom breaks yeah, right now? Uh, oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Turns out the boss is actually the one that's stopping you from having bathroom breaks, not the union. But, um, the, uh, the $700 bribe is coming at a really interesting time because there was just a case at the NLRB where, uh, the NLRB ordered a, ordered the company to bargain with a union. After a union vote narrowly lost because in the campaign, uh, the company did exactly that. I think it was actually even potentially a $700 bonus check uh, to to workers. And and uh, because it didn't have any precedence, it didn't have, you know, it was clearly to try to stave off the union. And it's illegal to do that. It's illegal to for the company to uh, promise uh, better if you don't unionize, and it's also illegal for them to promise worse if you don't unionize. It's because that's messing with the laboratory conditions of an election, right? The That's what the NLRA sets out is that union elections should have laboratory conditions on whether or not workers want to join a union. And so uh, that either, you know, working with the velvet glove kind of thing, you know, the good cop thing is illegal, the bad cop thing is illegal. It's illegal to do coercion. And so the NLRB has actually ordered, uh, has actually implemented a bargaining order for doing exactly what Mercedes just did. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't think we're going to have to do worry about that this time because I think the union is just going to win. I think that the workers are just going to join the union. Um, but uh, that's a potential outcome uh, if um, that is that $700 check is found to have uh, no merit. 
Workers have also said management uses favoritism to dole out overtime and other perks through what's known as group leader discretion. Sometimes workers say the favoritism is racially coded. Uh, so the company is now going to run focus groups. Plenty more captive audience meetings ahead of the union vote uh, from Luis. And, uh, you know, the, one of the things that they've pushed back on in these captive audience meetings is the idea that they came here for the Alabama discount. Uh, and so Luis <laughs> just lays out, again, just lays out some facts about the Alabama discount. He talks about how Jeremy uh, makes $32 an hour after 24 years on the job at Mercedes, and workers now top out at $34 an hour compared to $47 an hour at the Big Three by the end of the current contract. <laughs> As part of a benefits uh, package for locating in Alabama, America's fourth poorest state, uh, Alabama gave Mercedes a $42 million subsidy for plant construction. And for a while, the state paid the wages of trainee workers, borrowing from the state's pension fund to do that. That's crazy. But no, Mercedes says that we they came here for for the people because the people in Alabama are just so unique and different from anywhere else. It's not at all because the government was paying the wages to train our workers. Absolutely crazy. In 17 years, this is from Jacob Ryan, in 17 years, Mercedes workers have gotten a raise of $4.50 an hour. That is insane. Absolutely unacceptable. So, so they're not accepting it, and that's why they're unionizing. Uh, and we are obviously going to be uh, continuing to update you. Uh, and definitely, uh, if you want to uh, read the latest reporting, because we're not able to do the kind of reporting that More Perfect Union and Luis is at Labor Note. So I highly recommend following Luis. Um, he is kind of the guy to go to for the Southern UAW campaign. The latest and greatest on that. Uh, he's he he does reporting on that with the seriousness and care that it deserves. So. Definitely follow him, follow Larry. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm.